Preventing type 2 diabetes is an extremely important goal that we should strive for because we know from some long-term studies that if we can prevent type 2 diabetes, we can prevent the risk of long-term consequences of diabetes. There's at least one trial that shows that 30 years after diabetes prevention, there's a lower risk of even death, um, cardiovascular events in people with whom diabetes was prevented. Um, how do we identify preventive strategies? We do it by using uh, randomized controlled trials that, that identify strategies that work. And in fact, these trials have identified that lifestyle therapies such as weight loss, diet, um, physical activity are effective preventive strategies in addition to a number of different drug classes. And if one had to think about what are the sorts of strategies that prevent diabetes, they're things that reduce the amount of work that the beta cells in the pancreas need to do. The question is, we know how to prevent diabetes, but how do we actually do it? So one approach is we can target everybody at risk. So we can do, do uh, uh, screening tests to see if people are at risk for diabetes and everybody who's at risk for diabetes can be offered one of the several preventive strategies that work. The problem with that, and we know this from COVID, and we know this from experience as doctors, is that patients are reluctant to take preventive therapies if there's no other benefit associated with it. So if you say, all right, you take this drug, you won't have any major side effects or anything. You might have a few, but it won't be a big deal. And you'll have a lower risk down the line of having diabetes or of having some other outcome. That's a hard concept for many patients to get their heads around because they say, well, I'm feeling fine right now. Why should I take this medication? And if you doubt what I'm saying, just think of what we see with vaccinations. People are, are, are hesitant. Even to take COVID vaccine, there's been hesitancy uh, because they don't have the disease now. It's hard to convince as a clinician, patients to take a statin to prevent heart disease if I can't show them that their cholesterol is high and they're lowering cholesterol at the same time. So, um, the idea of prevention is a difficult one and it is more effective when you can in fact uh, show patients that they have a number of things that can be treated at the same time as preventing a future disease from happening. The other approach is to target the environment. Um, there have been now several studies that show that people, for instance, who live in a more walkable environment where they're more con where, where there's it's easier to walk, um, actually have lower rates of obesity. And so environmental approaches are actually probably the best way to prevent chronic diseases such as type 2 diabetes that are very um, dependent on the types of uh, ways that we conduct our lives, the lifestyles, and things of that nature. For instance, 100 years ago, there was very little type 2 diabetes. It's not that patients have changed. It's that the environments in which we live, live has changed. So trying to change those environments back to diabetes-friendly environments will certainly reduce the risk of diabetes. And then we can reserve individualized strategies for patients who are at very high risk and whom it's easier to convince to take things that will prevent their diabetes from developing or them from developing diabetes themselves. I think the focus on prevention has been a good one, but I think needs to be focused on environmental changes more than individual changes. And the other thing that's becoming a big issue, a big issue now is the concept of diabetes remission. As opposed to prevention, when you're trying to prevent something that isn't there now, diabetes remission is you have the disease, let's see if we can make it go away. And there is now lots of evidence that therapies such as bariatric surgery, and some intensive weight loss regimens can actually promote and achieve a diabetes remission in some patients. And there are ongoing research studies that are happening right now to identify medical therapies that can induce remission. And then I think we will have a situation where um, we will be able to really help solve the diabetes epidemic by changing the environment to prevent it and with people who have it by putting them into remission. And the final point that I like to tell people is when you think about it from a big picture, prevention is for populations. Remission is for individual patients.